you like the video if you could like and subscribe that'd be much appreciated helps the channel um, helps the channel massively um, also as well really really don't like bugs um, particularly spiders um, and I've just been traipsing around in the woods uh, big spider nearly got me okay guys welcome to a new episode of Resolute Fitness um, here on Okay, welcome to a new episode of Resolute Fitness. We're here today in the woods of North Carolina. We're here today at Johnson Mill Preserve. Recently looking at my channel, um, Resolute Fitness, I saw that it's been it's been just over a year since I posted a um, video on intermittent fasting or time restricted eating. Uh, I did two two videos. One was one was back in California, and then the other was was in Preston. I think it was six weeks six weeks after um, I posted the first video. So the first video was me um, discussing starting it why I, why I decided to to start it and that was due to um it was actually a joe rogan podcast intermittent fasting or time restricting eating um and i actually said how i kind of put them both in the in the same bracket and kind of flip between the two so basically on the joe rogan podcast um dr ronda was discussing the benefits of intermittent fasting and they were talking about george st pierre the mma fighter from the UFC um, and I was mentioning about what type of training he does um, gymnastics a lot of a lot of high intensity stuff and obviously obviously the fighting side he was discussing how he didn't start eating until about one o'clock in the afternoon and then he would eat later and then not eat anything so I just wanted to update on on how it's been for me so I, i've been doing it now for for a, well over a year uh intermittent fasting and i would say overall overall it's gone pretty well so when i originally started it i was i was in california then i went back to england um for for a few months flew back out to carolina back to england for a few more months and now i'm back in north carolina again so I haven't had a nice, typical, normal schedule, so to speak. Work's changed quite a lot, um, and, and I've also have, had to adapt my training schedules. I've gone from training in the morning, afternoon, in the evening, and also, to be honest, the strictness on the strictness of the intermittent of fasting has, has changed quite a lot. So there were some times when it was making sense for me to, to eat earlier and then stop eating um, like earlier on in the evening, sort of seven o'clock. And then, and then there's been times when I can, I've not been eating till like midday, one o'clock in the afternoon and then eating, eating later. So it's, it's changed, it's changed quite a bit. So currently, currently I'm training quite early, well, relatively early. So start training at eight o'clock. So typically now I'll wake up in the morning, won't really eat anything. Um, the only thing I'm having is coffee. Now I know, I know anything other than water has shown that that's technically breaking the fast. And then some people say you can you can have the coffee and obviously there's quite a lot of quite a lot of studies that's sort of ongoing at the moment and they they don't really know but I'm finding coffee in the morning not eating anything doing my doing my training and then it's normally around midday I start eating typically then I'll, I'll normally have 
our breakfast which will it's normally some sort of um, egg based meal really I'll have um, like a, an egg burrito or scrambled eggs bacon omelette something something like that uh, if I'm feeling particularly hungry I might have some have some cornflakes as well with that afterwards and then that that normally does oh got a bug on there that normally does me then for for the majority of the day until about five six o'clock and then I'll have my I'll have my dinner and then normally that's that's about it obviously weekends weekends can vary a little bit um, just to going out in the evening might eat a little bit later or might snack a little bit later but overall that's that's what I'm kind of doing so I'm on I'm on two meals biggest breakfast cooked breakfast maybe a little um, little cereal obviously it's not the greatest thing in the world but you know been born in the 80s cereal um, keep it plain but um, so it's not the most sugary cereal but normally cornflakes so over the past year uh, I've definitely got um, definitely got bigger I've probably probably about 15 pounds 20 pounds heavier than this time last year um, mainly mainly muscle so I, I'm quite happy with it at the moment um, and then probably October when the when the opens on I'll start to I'll probably come down about five pounds so to recap been doing the intermittent fasting now for one year and overall enjoyed it it's not always been perfect I when I originally started I I wasn't eating enough now I've started understand I've started to understand my own body started to understand um, how many calories I need how much protein how much fat um, I think one of the benefits of it a year ago I probably wasn't eating eating enough and I was paranoid about putting too much weight on um, where, where this way allows you I say this way is a lot better it gives you a kind of smaller window but you you can you can eat more I would say um, in that window and I've I've learned to be a little bit more flexible with with my diet um, I also said on the second video I might put a little bit of a clip in about um, I started to get different cravings one of the cravings was um, was beer started craving beer however there has been some interesting uh, little side effects so hunger wise I've been craving different things beer being the main one uh, so I'll be interested never never drank that before um, normally vodka and stuff like that but now now I'll, I'll I enjoy beer I suppose um, and I, I think that a lot of that's got to do with with the calories um, but it probably just wanted more cal calories. What I want people to take away from this is, I, I've watched a, a lot of videos on intermittent fasting and I've, I've read a lot of, of people doing it and people tend to beat themselves up if, if they can't do it really strict. So if they go an, an hour too long or an hour too short, um, I would say, Honestly, don't don't really matter. Mine's mine's changed massively. There's been sometimes I've been super super strict, and then there's been there's been times where I've just needed to to let go and just kind of enjoy in, in, enjoy eating for whatever period of time. Um, certainly with with the changes in circumstances, changes in, in changes in jobs, changes in uh, living situation, and and also countries that I've been in um, and I've just wanted to, to limit the stress and I don't think I don't think um, eating should be should be one of them um, honest account of the past year I just thought I'd do a follow-up video and just let you know let you know real life person um, without ideal circumstances and somebody who tries to train as hard as possible um, and also food, food on a on a budget as well of different countries, like a, like I mentioned earlier. So it's it's certainly possible to do. 
um, but my my advice would be 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 flexible with it um, try try your best to get I know uh, Dr Rhonda Patrick, Patrick mentions that if you can do it for five days of the week um, you're still going to get the benefits so don't think by having having a bit of a blowout on a on a Friday night or a Saturday um, that all the hard work has gone to gone to waste because that is not true Right, that's a wrap from me. I am all I've been doing is walking and it's so humid. So humid. Um yeah, I'm done. Right. Thank you for watching and to the next video. Peace. Boom. Turn this off. One of the funny things about filming, filming YouTube is um, because I don't have I don't have a fancy mic, I have to be careful um, with background noise. So I need it to be as quiet as possible, so the camera doesn't pick up any any wind or anything like that. Um, so so today that's why I've come come here. It's a nice walk. It's a little bit cooler under the under the shade of the trees. Um, however come on your own and you set up the camera in the tree it kind of looks like you're talking to a tree so I just had a person then walking a dog um, I just saw him in the corner of me eye when I was shooting that last piece and they've just looked over and just turned around and um, swiftly exited so they probably just think there's this big six foot three bald headed guy talking to a tree but there you go